Hello, everyone. Right, I've put a little testing presentation together for us, mainly focusing on the tests, why we do them and how we do them. And I've done this because a lot of people are struggling with testing at the moment. So I've decided to uh, do this little presentation for you today to um, just show you a little bit about testing and inspecting and um, and the kind of uh, results that we're going to achieve. Now, you should have fair understanding of inspection and testing so i'm just going to skip through it i'm going to send this presentation out to you guys so you've got it forever i'll send it on your one file emails uh, and any whatsapp groups we've got going i'll send it to them as well okay so let's uh let's have a little look then first of all safe isolation guys right please remember guys safe isolation okay this this is a thing a lot of people get um mixed up over right gs38 proof testers we can't use a multifunction test of a safe isolation Okay, it's got to be GS38 approved. When I say GS38 approved, that's a HSE document. Tips, four mil, two mil recommended. Finger guards, fused leads, no settings on the tester at all. For example, the Fluke T80 has got the, um, the dial on it. Shouldn't be using that for safe isolation. Uh, and the fixed leads, okay? So don't forget, use your approved tester. The correct procedure is ask permission. Don't forget to ask permission. Knock off, lock off. Keep your key on your person at all times. Warning tag, key in pocket, prove the tester on a proven unit or known source that it's working. Test and reprove the tester. The tests at single phase are line to neutral, line to earth, neutral to earth. Okay. The tests on three phase are best way to do this, guys, is just work, work each phase till it's complete. So <clears throat> I do it like this L1 to L2, L1 to L3, L1 to neutral. L1 to CPC, L2 to L3, L2 to neutral, L2 to CPC, L3 to neutral, L3 to CPC, and then neutral to CPC. What's the sequence of tests on a brand new installation? This is very important. You know this, and it is an assessment question, guys. Okay. So the first test is continuity of protective conductors, including all main and supplementary bonding. So that means all the bondings, gas, water, main bond, plus the R1, plus R2 on all radials. Then continuity of ring final. Then insulation resistance. Then polarity. Then ZD. Then PFC. Then ZS. Then RCD. Then phase sequence if required. And then functional testing. Okay. So R1 plus R2 testing, we simply link the line and CPC together in the DB. We we'll test at the furthest point of the circuit, operating all switches as we go, um, recording the highest result um, and expected results. So the thing with testing, guys, right, we've got to know what we're, what result we're looking for before we test. Otherwise, what's the point in testing if we don't know if the result that we obtain is good or bad? So, for example, a 55 meter length of 2.5 twin and earth cable, okay? The resistance per length per meter from table B1 uh, at 20 degrees is 19.51. Right, so I've got all the information that I need. So all I do is 55, so 55 meters times resistance per um, ohms per meter. So 55 times 19.51 divided by a thousand to give me the answer in ohms um, is 1.07 ohms. Nice simple calculation, okay? Ring final testing. Now, a lot of you get caught out with this. Guys, there are three steps to a ring final test, okay? <clears throat> step one, step two, step three. So step one is end-to-ends, okay? And remember, on a 2.5 twin and earth cable, uh, twin and CPC cable, I should say, that the uh, CPC is expected to be 1.67 times higher than that of the line and neutral conductors, okay? So how do we calculate our expected results? So... Again, we've got to know what we're testing for before we test it. Every single one of you who does the ring final test has to do this calculation. Guys, I will fail your ring final test if you do not do it in this order, right? So step, so calculations for step two then. So say, for example, we do end-to-ends, right? Line, neutral, and CPC. Step one, we do end-to-ends, right? So if R1 was 0 0.10 and Rn was 0 0.10 and R2 was 0 0.17, right? So for step two, it would simply be 0 0.10 plus 0 0.10 equals 0 0.20, divided by four, which gives us 0 0.05. So the expected result for step two, which is the R1 plus Rn test, is 0 0.05, right? And then for step three, the R1 plus R2 test, this time the calculation is slightly different. So we got 0 0.10 plus 0 0.17, 
<clears throat> which gives us 0 0.27, we divide that by 4, gives us our expected result for that um, step of 0 0.07, okay? So step two, then we connect the outgoing neutral with the incoming line and vice versa, that's creating a figure of eight. Um, we then test at every point on the ring. Please make sure you test at every point and then we just note the highest result down, not on a certificate, maybe just on the back page or the back of the certificate, okay? For step three, we connect the incoming line with the outgoing CPC and vice versa again, creating a figure of eight between those conductors. Again, we test at every point and then we record the highest result down as the R1 plus R2 for that circuit. No R1 plus R2 go to big R1 and R2 when the final result is in. So um, little R1 to big R1, but big R1 is the actual final result for that circuit. Okay, little R1, little R2 is when you're actually testing it. <clears throat> Insulation resistance to amendment two. Cables to be tested at 500 volts DC prior to connection. Cables tested at 250 volts DC after connection, as long as the manufacturer's instructions allow. CPC to remain in a main earthing terminal at all times whilst doing an insulation resistance test. Uh, test line to neutral, line to CPC and neutral to CPC. Three phases, test between phases and all phases to neutral and all phases to CPC. The minimum required result for this, according to guidance note three, is one mega ohm, but on a brand new installation, a result of less than 20 mega ohms should be further investigated. C table, two point note in guidance note three for minimum required results. Polarity dead and live. Well, you've already proved polarity dead by doing your continuity testing on your ring and on your R1 plus R2 for your radials, so all good. <clears throat> polarity live with a voltage indicator at the main incomings. Um, so you're just doing single phase. You're testing between line and neutral. You're expecting 230. Line and CPC, you're expecting 230. And neutral to CPC, you're expecting zero. And then your 10 tests then on your three phase. And obviously between phases, you're expecting 400 volts. Uh, and each phase to earth and each phase to neutral, you're expecting 230. And obviously neutral to CPC, again, you're not expecting any voltage at all. Okay, and use your Voltage indicator to carry out this test as well for safety purposes, okay? ZE testing, remove the main earth. It's an external test, so we need to make sure that main earth is removed and the system remains locked off. You can do a high or low test, depending. Um, so if you want to do two lead tests, that's fine. That's the high setting. If there's no RCDs down the line, then that'll be fine. Or if there are RCDs down the line, <clears throat> you might want to do a three lead test on the low setting. Again, single phase, just test between uh, line to CPC and note the result down. Three phase, you will test um, between L1 to CPC, L2 to CPC, and L3 to CPC, and record in the highest of those three readings that you obtain, okay? For 3D test, um, again, just connect the line and neutral, uh, the, sorry, the, the CPC and the neutral uh, on the neutral bar and then just test um, the line, note the result down. For three phase, you just test in your L1, L2, and L3 as well, right? And, and note in the highest result. TNCS system, maximum 0 0.35. TNS, maximum 0 0.8 ohms. And a TT is a maximum of 200 ohms, guys, okay? BFC, re-terminate the main earth, guys. You cannot take your ZE result and switch the um, PFC test at the KA um and, and have that result you've got to do this test with the main earth back in if you don't you will fail the test two lead test um again on on the high setting same as before line to cpc though then line to neutral and record the highest test uh two lead test on three phase again you're just testing six tests for this one you're testing all the lines to cpc and all the neutrals uh to the lines uh, you get six results. Your highest is likely to come from the line and neutral tests. Um, you then take the highest result and double it on three phase to get your, your result. Don't forget to double it. And a three lead low, again, you just connect line, neutral, and CPC wires from your tester to the board. Um, and then test and record the result. And again, for your three lead test, you're connecting... Um, CBC on the, on the main earthing terminal, neutral on the neutral bar, and testing L1, L2, and L3, <clears throat> and then double your highest result um, for your PFC. Either, either way is good, okay? The purpose of the PFC test, so why do we do the PFC, is to ensure that the um, measured result does not exceed the rating of the breaker. So if it's a 6,000 amp breaker, 6KA, 6,000 amps, uh, for a type B MCB, a result of below 6 
KA is a good result, a result of higher than 6KA is a bad result. Okay, cool. ZS test, then we can do, so why do we do a ZS test, guys? To ensure that enough current will flow in order that the protective device will operate within the permitted time. Very, very, very important you know that. ZS by calculation then is just ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. So if my R1 plus R2 was 0 0.10 and my ZE was 0 0.10, my ZS would be 0 0.20. Um, but if you're going to be doing a, a measurement, you need to be measuring it at every point. Uh, max ZS can be found in the new amended on-site guide, page 145. It's on page 131 in the old on-site guide, but it's table B1, okay? Um, but a little bit about the results. So in the on-site guidance, guidance or three for a 32 amp MCB type B, it's 1.1 ohms maximum. But in the regs book, it's 1.37. That's because in the on-site guide and the guidance note three, we always work to the 80% of tabulated value. Okay, and that's information that you need to know as well. Very important. That's why I'm highlighting it here. Okay, so make sure that you tell me that, right? RCD testing again to amendment two. Um, push the mechanical test button before testing, not after, and also uh, ensure that we inform the customers to do this every six months. We're going to test at times half and times one. No need to test at times five anymore. We're testing at times half. We're not expecting it to trip. We're testing for an overly sensitive RCD. We're also testing at zero and 180 degrees of the sine wave. And we're going to do that at times half and times one. And the maximum trip time expected um, at times one is a maximum of 300 milliseconds. You will record the highest of the two readings. So you'll, it'll trip at zero, you'll trip it at 180. The highest of those two readings will then be recorded as your RCD time for that, cir for that circuit, okay? Um, phase sequence then, if applicable, carry out phase sequence test. It's a fairly simple test. Uh, I'm not gonna really talk through that because there's not much you need to know apart from putting three leads onto three L1, L2, L3, lead on L1, lead on L2, lead on L3, press phase rotation, and it'll tell you if it's right or wrong. Functional testing, don't forget this. Check all lights, switches, sockets, socket testers, every single thing, pull cords, um, every single thing, every accessory, you need to carry out a functional test on, all right? Something, again, that's overlooked, but you need to make sure you do functional tests, guys, or you'll fail your uh, your testing. And that, guys, is, is the end. That's the end of the test. Uh, testing inspection including all your expected results okay so from this point on now with this information nobody at all should have any problems with testing because you now know why you're doing the tests in what order you're doing the tests and what expected results are okay thank you very much indeed